Welcome, Dr. Uh, best to yourself. You're welcome to the show. It's a pleasure. Okay, Thank so you. let's just start from uh, you since you <laughs> you just uh, you're just coming on the show right now. So look at we're looking at the the recent publication by the National Human Rights uh, Commission, which was recently published that uh, a total working sum number of fifty five thousand plus you know human rights complaints were recorded in the month of May alone and that's in, on the month of uh, June alone and this yes and they noted that out of the human out of the complaints uh, violation against uh, public police you know public uh, servants were at the top you know of the list you know of course I amongst various infractions so um, what do you think is the cause you know of this humongous number of human rights violations in spite of all the various laws and uh, uh, government agencies that have been set up you know to protect you know the rights of the citizens well, what do you think is in fact I can say it's an aberration with the way democracy is being practiced because it is the practice of democracy that gives impetus to all these security agencies government uh, institutions to violate with impunity the fundamental right of individuals. Let me just take our mind back a bit to 1999 when the current democratic uh, uh, experiment commenced. We were having this high hope that gone are the days of uh, the brutality military, you know, uh, um, unnecessary incarceration and all those and somehow, the military, the police, and everybody, for the first three months, I noticed that there was respect for human rights until this issue of militancy now came up. And with the militancy, it's like the government now introduced police action that, okay, since these people don't want to abide by the rules, you apply the stick as well. You understand? And before you know it, it started, uh, it extended to using something like martial law, um, excessive force. So uh, people are being uh, arrested, locked up at will, without trial for some days. In fact, I have two cases I'm trying to you know, handle presently. There's somebody at Ikoi Correctional Center who has been there since 2017. You can imagine that. I've even written to the siege of Lagos State, and they said, uh, well, he has committed an offense of assault. No trial, nothing. So these are part of the 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 the, the list. If you say human rights, I think that's an understatement. It's much, and government is aware of this. So the question is, what effort have the government put in place to mitigate all this uh, uh, number of right violations? We don't want to even go into the issue of the security agencies or the government uh, uh, parastatas. And if you look at Chapter 4 of the Constitution, the fundamental varies. It is will include ownership of property. These days, a lot of properties are being confiscated without compensation. That is also a right violation, apart from the traditional uh, uh, physical assault and uh, inhuman degrading treatment. So this is just a summary or a summary of what I can say. Is happening okay? Um, Barrister Deji, let us come to you because from the report, it is reported that most of this uh, human rights violation, majority of them are carried out by state actors, that is, state institutions. So, what would you suggest would be the way out? Because it is expected that one of the fundamental uh, essence of government is to protect you know the lives, properties, in fact, the human rights of its citizens but when it is as if the dog is eating the bone that is hung on its neck so what would you suggest should be it should be the way out thank this? you very much i i think the problem came out of our long our prolonged military regime uh, and it's more psychological than legal if you ask me in my view is you see the display of abuse of rights even by political power holders the way they violate the laws, impunity, the way the order arrest and detention of those 
seasons who perhaps they feel have violated their rights. All right, governors, you can see it in the way governors go around destroying the lives and properties of their citizens as if they are military government. In fact, you find that there is a breakdown of rule of law where, where you are talking about executive lawlessness than even the, what we had during the military regime. There are some things the military government would not do, which civilian government are doing today, as of today. Illegal demolition of people's property without proper notice, without any resettlement, without compensation, is going on all over the states, all over Nigeria. And the executive government, that the, the, those of them who are elected office holders, they are violating the rights of people even more than any other group of people in this country. So we, we have a scenario where, as a result of that, even the law enforcement agents now see themselves as overlords, uncontrollably. The way they, if you see them on the road, their attitude towards the citizen, they don't even regard themselves as civil servants. All right. Well, so we are almost out of time. Of course, that, that point we are taking. But so we also want to get your point. Of course, we have enumerated, and I think that we have consensus on the fact that we have state actors violating of course, as a legal yes. practitioner, you've yes. seen this thing play out, yes. you know, over and over again. So what is the solution? Is it about training? Is it about, but as Deja have said, it's more psychological than legal. So what would you, because we have seen where even police officers who are meant to protect the citizens kill some of them. We've seen some who have been sentenced. Of course, the case of Bola and Lacey resonates with us, you know, the one that happened at Lakey. So what do you think is the way out of this uh, issue? Because we shouldn't be seeing high number of violations coming from state actors. Yes, I think uh, the solution is, one, adherence to the law, rule of law. Let the law prevail. And how will that be done? The, um, Dr. Juku of the National Human Rights Commission, I said that the commission as a body will collaborate with non-governmental organizations and other agencies, including legal practitioners, to ensure that those in power are made to, re to realize that citizens of this country have rights to life, rights for uh, protection of their uh, human dignity, liberty, freedom of movement, and so on. You discover that before now, they were kind of adherence to this fundamental rights because there was vigorous campaign for human rights uh, human, against human rights abuses over time, but like it has lowered down. The way forward is let those in authority, the governors, those, whoever, those politicians and those in authority know that whatever they do in office must be accounted for. And then let the NGOs and those activists that have been speaking for the oppressed rise up once again we need because it's like yes yeah, because it's uh, like the tempo has gone down considerably uh, uh, all right but so we, we're almost out of time let's uh take our zoom guest and let's get his final word on this before you know we will call it a day for today Okay, Pastor Jack, um, uh, we are talking about the human rights violation. We have less than 60 seconds to get your, your, your view on this and your final words on the show. Um, obviously, one of the things that this is the, the violations are training, the training, compensation, and punishment for violation of these rights. If you know that the rights have been violated, the top and ensure that you can go to court, ensure you get justice again. And when justice is gotten, there will be a total reduction in the violation of the rights of indigenous. Thank you. Thank you for having you on the show this evening. It was a pleasure. Thank you. All right. So um, uh, let, let's get your final words on the, the topics for the Supreme Court call it a day. Just uh, 30 seconds. Yes, I am glad that the Supreme Court has laid to rest the issue of local government financial autonomy. From this moment, every monument for local government council should be given to them directly from the federal account, and that settles it. All right. They're coming to the issue of human rights uh, violations. The, uh, the, the, the figure released by the National Human Rights Commission that 
in one month, 106,604. Violet a woman is uh, highly embarrassing. All right. And that should not be All right. in the country. Like so, Nigeria. so yeah. Barista, you should, can we get the last one? We're almost out of time. Yeah, um, I'm just in, uh, I adopt what uh, my learned friend has said. I have nothing much to add. But uh, my uh, worry is that some people are even opposed to the Supreme Court judgment for reasons best known to them. I think, uh, like the happening. Attorney General of uh, Ebony says, they say we will study the CTC of judgment and after that we will come up with a position. So lawyers are here to come up with a position. Thank you, Vice President. 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 Maybe they want to write an, an opinion for the Supreme Court to set aside the rules. I don't know. My point of order is on the human rights abuse. I think there is a need to engage the law enforcement agent in this country for them to be properly trained. Many of those officers, their attitude is, is terrible. The, 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 the way they go about their duties is terrible. All right. Thank you, Barista.